Hello, welcome back to Nuzlocke Vlogs. I play Pokemon and I do a Nuzlocke and I'm still working on my Batman video for December, which I'm hoping to have written by the end of October and I've got most of the writing done already because today I did my watch through and write up of what happens in Batman and Robin and man, I think this actually might be the best of the original four Batman movies. I mean, not really. It's a very, very dumb movie. Like, I think Poison Ivy's a terrible villain. I think Mr. Freeze wins in a few scenes by just being so over-the-top goofy, but there is... Arnold Schwarzenegger fails completely at doing any of the seriousness or sadness of the character. It, it's a very flawed movie. But the thing is, like, can we talk about how this movie opens? That Mr. Freeze is robbing a museum and Batman and Robin show up and he freezes the floor so they click their boots and out comes their bat ice skates. So they fight his hockey dress minions. Oh cool, you jumped down the ledge and now you can't fight me, bitch. So they fight his hockey minions on ice skates. They play hockey for this diamond and he like freezes a giant dinosaur skeleton and shouts, What killed the Ice Age? Or... What killed the dinosaurs? Oh, the Ice Age! Like, it's so fucking stupid. And then he gets into his tank, which transforms into a rocket. And he flies to space and fights Batman. And then he jumps out of the rocket and fucking butterfly wings pop out of his back. And he flies down and ba the rocket explodes. And Batman and Robin surf through the sky on the explosion and fight in midair. It's, it's just so fucking dumb and cool. I love when superhero movies are dumb and cool. I like that that movie opens with them playing hockey with Mr. Freeze's minions for the diamond. Unfortunately, the rest of the movie isn't as good. Uh, it That's the silliest scene in the movie, and I wish, I honestly wish it would be sillier because it works really good when it's silly. Uh, I don't really care for Batgirl as a character. I think Robin is unbearable in that movie, With it's just, you don't trust me. Batman's also a bit of a dick with like, it's such a forced conflict where it's like, Robin, I can't trust you because you ran in to fight Mr. Freeze and you got free frozen, so I can't trust you at all. Even though, like, five minutes earlier, like, 30 seconds earlier, Batman gets frozen by Mr. Freeze and Robin saves him. It's just manufactured drama and them fighting over Poison Ivy is dumb as shit. Like, and it's not a very good Mr. Freeze movie. It's not a very good Bane movie. It's not a good... Poison Ivy movie, but I will say, the emotional heart of it is that Alfred is dying and Bruce is dealing with that, and there's actually a lot of really touch, tender scenes of Batman dealing with this that make the film actually kind of good from time to time. And also, it features the bad credit card, and I'm not going to spoil the joke, but I have a perfect joke about the nostalgia critic for this video. Ah, bad credit card, bad credit card. Actually, the Nostalgia Critic gets a name drop in my s serious analysis of uh, fascism. Is the Like, he isn't. I'm not calling Doug Walker a fascist, but I'm... Like, in this video, what I'm trying to do was talk about how the Batman movies changed over time and how people reacted to them and what we can glean from that in our discussion of... Uh, Batman vis-a-vis -vis fascism and I do think the sort of like early 2000s backlash like this isn't dark and mature and violent enough this isn't Batman Batman's supposed to be killing people violently like this isn't a good movie because it isn't macho enough I think that's something to take into account in uh, our analysis of what Batman means as a character even though that's not in the movie it's like out of text how people reacted to that I think that's a thing to have a discussion over, you know? Adding that in with videos also getting a discussion of, like, how... Like, I don't think the 60s Batman movie is fascist, but I think if... It's sort of in this... It was made at the time, but if you made a movie nowadays that took place in the 60s and was like that, I would call it borderline fascist with this nostalgic looking back at really turbulent times in American history... And uh, just with this idealized, like, man, wasn't everything better when people respected the cops and everyone was white and there wasn't any crime, even though, I mean, that's not even slightly accurate to how 
things were when that film came out, you know? And I'm kind of rambling. And this this is also on my mind because I had to do, oh god, this was terrible. I had to do a political meet and greet for an unopposed candidate. So why fucking bother? Like, what does it fucking matter what this person has to say? She's running unopposed because it's just a super Republican district. And she flat out said that, you know, that's why I like running here. It's just such a such a conservative community. Like, yeah, I bet it's nice as a politician to not have to campaign at all. But also you are campaigning and I have to deal with your campaigning. It was scheduled to be a one hour meet and greet and it went for two and a half hours and I had to cover it. It just went on and on and ugh, had to write it up. So that's what my week was. I mean, there were other things, I, but that was... Just a drag, and some of the conversation just got so fucking, so fucking stupid. Like, um, there's this guy there, uh, who I've interacted with a lot. He's like the local, uh, I think he's vice chair of the local Republican Party. He starts going on this rant about how we need to go back to how the country was before the 60s, back when we had prayer in schools, back when we had that government-mandated religion. It is mandatory the mandatory religion chosen by the United States government. Wasn't that great? Wasn't it great when we didn't have basic constitutional freedoms in the United States? And he just talks about how, you know, things were so much better when we had prayer in schools back in the first 180 years of a country. And I just asked him flat point blank to his face, was this a good country in those first 180 years? He's like, no, but I think people were more willing to change. And I think that's, yeah, that's bullshit. I... Like, the U.S. is currently a very devoutly Christian country, and um, honestly, I don't think that's, like, I think that's a neutral thing. I don't think it's good or bad. Like, the nicest people I've ever met are Christians, and every single vile, evil, hateful person, the worst people I've ever met, are Christians. So I don't think someone's religion really has, let me check if I have the right Pokemon up front, I don't think someone's religion really has any real bearing on uh, their morality. And I don't think the U.S. becoming more Christian would make it any more fucking moral because I've met enough Christians. And honestly, a lot of the people are like, this is a Christian nation. The founding fathers were clear that this country was made for Christians and Christians only, and it needs to be ruled over by Christians. Those people are generally, in my experience, are the worst fucking people on the planet. They are the cruelest, most hateful, most vile human beings you can meet. And, like, getting back to the point, it's like, ah, oh, yeah, we, you know, we used to have prayer in schools back... We also used to, uh, when we had prayer in schools, used to have slaves, you know, and Jim Crow, and fucking lynching. So I don't think, you know, I don't think, uh, when we had prayer in schools, we were better people. I think that's fallacious and stupid. And I just think this fucking... This, well, nostalgia is, like, tied into fascism. Like, this is the fucking point it's like this uh idealizing of an imagined past that never fucking existed this golden past era that we need to return to before we had all of this like civil rights and all of these minorities asking for things like that's fucking fascist as shit and anyway the other thing in that meeting that stuck with me was uh the discussion of chemtrails ever had a sitting politician this is like state level but still Ever had a politician start talking to you about chemtrails? And you know what? This politician, I'm not... It's fucking hell in a haze. I don't give a shit. You could have figured that out because just basic searching of... Like, I don't hide where... Whatever, you, you could have figured that out. Yeah, yeah, talking about hell in a haze. She's on the Environmental Protection Subcommittee. She is in charge of... Uh, looking out for Iowa's environment, and she goes on rants to me about chemtrails? Oh, sweet Jesus, chemtrails aren't fucking real. You know that, right? It's a, it's a very dumb conspiracy theory that isn't real. You, Oh, God, you don't understand the chemtrails aren't real. Oh, God, you are in a position of power, and you're talking to me about chemtrails. Oh, oh, God, you're... It, well, it's not... It's like, you know, I've been hearing a lot from my constituents about chemtrails. And uh, this woman sitting next to me, who I actually know, is like, 
oh yeah, that's like real, and like uh, they've been doing that over my house. And I heard, I read that Joe, I heard that Joe Biden is trying to block out the sun with chemtrails to cool the planet. And Helena Hayes is like, wow, wow, that's, huh, yeah. Oh God, you fucking gullible moron! No, no, you sweet, sweet Jesus! Oh, this is terrible! Oh God, damn it! It's also a thing. Like there are some times where I, I like a politician will say something, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not fucking quoting that because I know that's, I know what you mean by that. Like this politician who is like super fucking transphobic, been very transphobic uh, in conversations I've had with her in the past. In uh, her discussion of why she ran is because. Uh, like, there was a transgender, like, a 15-year-old trans boy, uh, who, uh, attended, uh, a local pool and swam with using tape to cover his chest instead of, like, a bikini top, and this angered me so much that I decided to become a politician, and, like, oh my god, I don't fucking give a shit, why the fuck, sh I, I cannot imagine giving a shit about this even slightly, but just the, the trans academy for her kids. Anyway, what I was saying, like, that I don't quote things. It's like, you know, my my main thing, the most important thing for me as a person, is stopping the sexualization and protecting our children. So I'm not going to fucking quote that. I'm not going to have, I'm not going to say, Helena Hayes says that she supports stopping the sexualization of her children. Because actually what that, what that means is Helena Hayes supports beating the shit out of trans kids to force them back into the closet. Like, it's just fucking stupid bullshit. And you know, the people who at 9 a.m. on a Wednesday morning go to a political meet and greet for a politician who was running unopposed at a coffee shop are not good. They're just whack jobs. They're like the weirdest people on the fucking planet. So you get like the conversations about chemtrails because, you know, that's the type of people who are showing up to talk to the politicians are the people who are really into talking about chemtrails, you know? And I still need to name my Oshawa Till Castellia. I actually mashed through that text last time. Um, oh, I love talking from, like, fucking homeschool homeschooled people. Because, like, we had going on in Iowa is uh, our wonderful, wonderful governor who's trying to kill public education decides to start giving public education funds to private schools, and you think, wow, why would she do that? It's because private schools can be discriminatory. Like, uh, public schools, they cannot kick out a kid for being gay, but private schools can. So the governor is like, I think we should, uh, I am giving all this public money to private schools that aren't bound by the Constitution, because private schools, uh, you can send them to ones that agree with your moral and religious standing. I'm not saying uh, it's specifically because they're discriminatory, but you all know what I mean. You know, you all know why you're sending to private schools. Um, like, seriously, like, the number of private schools in this country skyrocketed in the 1950s. So many private schools opened in the 50s because of Brown versus Board of Education, because private schools used to be able to kick out kids for being black, and that's why our fucking Republican governor is backing private schools. It's because private schools are allowed to be shitty. Anyway, uh, these fucking whack jobs at this public meeting are uh, asking, you know, you need to expand that, like, uh, giving public school money to private schools. You need to uh, also give that to homeschool parents uh, because uh, I should be paid for homeschooling my kids. Like, oh, oh, no. No, no, that's bad. Fuck this shit. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the fresh water. Like, no, we are not... T like, no. You're not getting fucking paid. And I have people, like, weirdo homeschool parents, talk to me before. Uh, I don't think you should be given public school money to homeschool your kids, because that's just going to incentivize the worst fucking people to just take their kids out of school for the money and then not teach them at all. If they did that, and I don't think they should do that, that should come with massive, by the way, I forgot to turn on the pants here, uh, massive increases to scrutiny and making sure you're not abusing these kids because it's going to increase the amount of kids in, prob in a homeschooling. And honestly, a lot of people homeschool their kids so they can be terrible parents to them. So they're like, they wouldn't say that. It's like, no, I homeschool my kids so I can... Uh, protect them from information that could challenge their worldview and have them not be a diehard fascist Christian. 
Like, I want to homeschool my kids so I can control any and all information they ever encounter, and I can beat the shit out of them if they talk off to me. Like, you know, a lot of people homeschool their kids so they can make their kids grow up into these shitty little fascists. And, like, I don't think uh, my tax dollars should be going to creating these fucking Christian fascists. Like, we don't talk enough about how fucked up, how insane a lot of, how, like, just the worst fucking people, like, homeschool their kids so they can make their kids into little mini copies of them, like, who don't have any fucking thoughts of their own, so that they can abuse their kids and not face any consequences for it. So, a lot of them sexually abuse their kids. It's, like, terrible. And, like, there's no fucking oversight, because, well, actually... The, even though this is worse for the kids and it cuts them off socially and it exposes them to abusers, uh, those are property. Kids aren't human beings. They don't have rights. They're the property of the parent. If the parent wants to uh, be really shitty to their kid, well, that's their right as a parent because they own that property. Like, the idea of treating kids as pop property of parents is this very dangerous idea. It's the worst fucking idea in America and it needs to be abolished. But if you, you know, if you go for homeschool parents and cutting off their obsessive authoritarian control of their children like they will uh, burn the country to the ground they'll fucking riot and that's my rant about homeschooling ugh, ugh, that's enough that's enough nonsense i have a comment from earlier that's long that i'm going to read leonid chichi bobby 2383 i'm not sure quite where those spaces are but on my epilogues video Hey, I actually read the epilogue solely because I wanted to watch your three-hour-long video essay on it. Reading them was torture, but I got through it eventually. The pages and pages of beautifully written, gut-wrenching emotional porn. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the F out of it. After watching your other vids on Homestuck, I had enough trust that I took your advice in the beginning to read it, and I'm glad I did. But it's embarrassing how much emotion it got out of me. I'm just so effing suggestible. Thank you for your analysis. I intend to read your fanfics now. Um, yeah, I really like the epilogues. I think they're underrated. I think people hate them for undeserved reasons. I've talked about this extensively, but I do think the epilogues are, yeah, pretty good. I think epilogues, very good. You should give them a shot and read them uh, if you enjoyed Homestuck, because they continue on Homestuck's themes and writing pretty well. The only thing in the epilogues that was too much for me is the whole Gamzee shebang. Yeah, I think that did go a bit, like, over the edge and just on and on and on. I piled everything on him, like, everything. I'm biased because I like Gamzee. I always have. I can't help to identifying with him. And I know I'm not alone. I got no d words to describe how disgusted I felt. Except I'm gonna. Even with him being aware of the story and playing the role, it's just even worse. Like, yeah, I understand the fuck this guy approach. But can't help seeing there's something off with the treatment of him going all the way on the dehumanizing comedy using his body to display extremes of how disgusting a body can even get, making a point of him being filthy in every every chance they get. The gruesome violence done to him casually, because he deserved it, right? And in the next moment, sexualize him beyond any reason. Constant sexualization. He's also still 16. In the beginning of Candy, what the actual fuck? Technically, he's like 40 by the end of it, but I got what you're saying. Um, can't even stop putting question marks at the end of my sentences his whole ambiguity of social signaling he's oppressed as a troll and, his, and in a position of power as a tyrant's consort and, the, uh, and a religious leader re religious leader breastfed by a corporate shadow tyrant okay that's kind of clever actually that's that's clever I never picked up on that he's so stupid he can never you can never take him seriously, and he can program people into his religion. He's unimposing and mostly placid and capable of great violence. All these contradictions just remind him of dehumanizing propaganda where a group of people don't matter at all. Filthy pests, a ridiculous joke that is a threat to the social order or physical safety and the safety of the children at the same time. Yeah, there's some racial implications you could find in Gamzee that aren't great. I don't know how intentional they are, but it's very clearly a reading a lot of people have had that aren't good. And here he is absolutely is both of those things at the same time. And what does that say exactly? I am in no way defending the guy's honor, but I can't unsee this. Why be so cruel? Or the point is that he's aware 
that he's just like that, that he does this because he's him, but other characters do things to him too. They're not as mercy and he doesn't control them, they still behave like this around him. He asks for it, right? Maybe the goal is to bamboozle the reader into participating in the xenophobic practice of laughing at Gams and reveling in his suffering because he deserves punishment for this his deeds or purely because of repulsiveness and root for the troll rebellion against the fascist regime at the same time. Maybe I'm grasping at straws here. I don't know. It's just to remember it's an entertainment piece and not an honest to God representation of reality or even an approximation of him. You can make disgusting piece of shit characterization interesting, but this is a nit IMO. Also, it feels like they want to beat the ever beat ever liking games over the reader. I personally feel attacked. Not going to happen. I got PDA. Honestly, here's my fucking take on Gamzee. I never gave a shit about Gamzee. I don't get why people give the shit about Gamzee. He's a minor character with very little screen time, very little conversations, and it's just, well, he's a drug addict, and then he changes into a violent villain. I didn't give a shit about Gamzee before he snaps. I don't understand why people do. I just... Like, what he is for nearly all of his screen time in the comic is as this creepy silent killer minion and that is just like a lot of it is like the fan f fandom uh coloring people's uh perception of characters but i never gave a shit about gamzy here's what i thought of dirk a big thing of homestuck is connections dirk doesn't know how to feel connected to the world or people but he wants to be which i read out of his ramblings so absorbs chrono seeding his children now and eh, that's a stretch he wants closeness, but he doesn't know how to get it, because he's a man raised on outdated echoes of perceptions of a strange society. He used to be half of the world, with Roxy being the other half, and instead of learning to be less to fit in the new world, he resorted to inflating himself even further and consume, but he thinks he's humble and heroic, taking a villain role, a very oral thing to do, very infantile. Gamzee sucking on titties maybe from this area of thinking too. God, this is disgusting. They're both shards of word English after all. Technically not shards. Technically they're combining. But whatever. And Roxy and Candy reduce herself smaller than was healthy and recovers from that. I like to imagine they are opposite like that. Dirt, Dirk and Meat needs to be so big that he's a narrator. And Roxy and Candy is so small that John thinks she's an NPC. That's a really good observation. Overall, it was hard work getting through the epilogues, but I learned a lot. I don't have the luxury of friends sharing my special interests, so thank you for this place to listen to your thoughts and take my own out of the noggin. I appreciate that. Okay, back to doing game. Uh, I don't know about the games. I, ju I just don't care about fucking Gamzy. I don't care. I don't have sympathy for it. You could do... Like, actually, I've got mixed feelings on Crow Strider AU as a work of fiction, but it does do actually with that with Gamzy and like you could have done that but that's never in Homestuck there's never the sympathy or looking behind the curtain or trying to make Gamzy more so I don't really care to you know I don't know I don't know um but those were some good observations of Dirk about how you know Calliope also Al Calliope says this like ooh he grew up alone in this ocean and that's the way he is why he's like he is. That's why he has to be this big guy in control of everything. Because he feels small. Always gazing at a horizon he can never reach. Like, that's some good observation about Dirk. And now I'm going to beat the anime chef guy. And then I am going to... Oh, oh you almost killed unnamed Oshawa. Ooh, oh, that's bad. That's fucking bad. Ooh, ooh that's bad. Okay. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Ah, uh, he can't die without a name. It's, he can't die without a name. Like, then how can I do the fucking fight club like his name was Robert Paulson scene? Should I just name him Robert Paulson? Don't work up. Oh, God, am I gonna lose to fucking Grass Boy? To fucking Grass Boy? I'm gonna lose to fucking Grass Boy. Oh, wait, I've got this. No, that's fine. I can just use potions. But I almost lost a fucking... <gasps> my freshwater 
the dude with the sunglasses in the lobby. He was my salvation. He gave me fresh water, and because of that, I'm going. I'm not going to lose this fight unless you get a surprise critical. He saved my run. I'm going to go run out, and I'm going to save this man who sa who sa thank this man who saved my run. I was. I almost thought I was going to get a crit there, but it's fine. It's fine. Pastelix is going to level up. I think it's a few more before evolution. It's fine. I have to go run out and and thank a man. I have to thank the man who saved my team. Ah, badge number one in the case. Why aren't these guys the ninjas? Because, like, at the end, they're the only ones that sh don't show up, but the ninjas are there, so everyone thought, oh, it's because they're the ninjas. The, then in black and white, too, there's a flashback. Wait, I ran past him. No, don't cutscene me. I have to save my sailor. Like, there's a scene of... Um, these guys, and they're like, ooh, we feel bad about not being there at the end, and hey, we're gonna fight the ninjas now. And I don't care, I can't do the dream world. I, ca I can't do the dream world because that got cut out of the game, because, like, all the online services are down now, and also I'm on an emulator. Just let me go back so I can thank my savior. Thank my savior. We need prayer in schools, but specifically... For this guy. Also, I didn't really touch on that. Prayer in schools, like, government mandating that everyone be a specific religion, that's really fucked up and, like, authoritarian. Like, no, that's, uh, that's bad. That's really fucking bad. Batman and Robin was just kind of okay.